record. All right. So let me read what I just read. We're talking about Tammuz now. The queen told the worshippers that Tammuz was killed by a wild pig. That's why you got ham for sale. Did you know that? The son of Ham? The son of Noah? You do know that according to the Hebrews that, that Ham, any meat from the pig is unclean. But So I'm under grace. I thank grace because I can have pork. I can have lobster. Yummy, yummy, yummy. The queen told the worshippers of Tammuz that was killed by a wild pig that the sum of his, the sum of the blood fell upon the stump of an evergreen tree, and the stump grew into a full new tree overnight. Are you ready? I'm going to quote from the Bible. Are you ready? King James. I don't know what your other Bible say. Jeremiah 10, 1 through 6. If you know the Bible, you know what I'm reading. I had a church one time, we're, we're going to it, and when we come to the part of the Christmas tree, they completely went from Jeremiah 9 to Jeremiah 11. And when I went to the pastor, say, hey, you forgot Jeremiah 10. You won't want to know what he said about that. Hear ye the word of which the Lord has spoken unto you. This is what God spoke in. O house of Israel. Okay, it's directed to the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, God said it. Learn not the way of the heathen, or be dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. Coronavirus, coronavirus, oh coronavirus. For the customs of the people are vain. What's a custom? For one cutteth a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. Deck it with... Deck the halls with boughs of silver. Oh, sorry. You know what the context is. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. You know, that, that keep the Christmas tree from, I mean, keep the tree from falling. I didn't mean to say Christmas tree. I'm sorry. That it moved not. You don't want your Christmas tree falling over. I mean, tree. You don't want your tree falling over. Makes a mess. They are upright as a palm tree, straight up, unless you have cats, but speak not. They must need to be born. you got to carry them, like the Pope, because they cannot go. They're not going anywhere. Be not afraid of them, okay, for they cannot do evil, the tree, neither also is it in them to do good. For as, as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in thy might. Well, I'm going to tell you what I believe, and you don't have to. I think that's the Christmas tree. I've heard all the stories, and we got a free will. This made the evergreen tree sacred by the blood of Tammuz. That the, the pig that killed Tamu, some of his blood ended up on the tree, and we have a sacred evergreen tree. Well, we find it, the tree in Jeremiah 10, whether it's a Christmas tree or not a Christmas tree. But the birthday of Tamu is December 25th. Okay? She also proclaimed a 40 day period of time of sorrow each year prior to the anniversary of the death of Tamu. There's your link. And we did a whole uh, part one of this video. It's going to be on YouTube and SoundCloud. It is about Lent and it's about Tammuz. Tammuz is the Antichrist. During this time, no meat was to be eaten. Worshippers were to meditate on the sacred mysteries of Baal and Tammuz. And to make the sign of the T in front of their hearts as they worship. You know the genuflection? You know what the, the cap makes the cross? They make the sign of the cross? There it is. It's the sign of Tamu. T. Capital T. Tamu. Not the cross. Tamu. T. Bible says, Cursed be he that the, the diet that hangs on the, on the tree. The cross is a curse. You're to take their bodies down before night. 
It's not a blessing. There's a church. The Holy Cross. It ain't holy. It's a curse. Get the Bible right, people. They also ate sacred cakes, hot cross buns. Did we do that? With making a T cross or a cross on the top of the buns. Why are the hot cross buns like that for tea for Tammuz? Now this is the Catholic Catechism. This is a quote out of the Catechism. The sign of the cross is a prayer, a blessing, and a sacramental. Well, to <laughs> on your sacramental. Also, a longer version is commonly said while making the sign of the cross on the forehead. You mean where you could receive the mark? One of the places you can get the mark of the beast? Where you get the ashes? I like Ash Wednesday. I like going around going, hey, you got dirt on your forehead. <laughs> I didn't even know Ash Wednesday came up this year. I missed it. Usually I go to Walmart. I go around. Hey! Excuse me, sir. You got dirt on your forehead. Oh, uh, 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 that's, that's my sign of a cross from Ash Wednesday. And I try to give him a gospel track about Jesus Christ. Yes, I'm rude and crude. All right. The mouth and chest. By the sign of the cross delivers us from our enemy. You who are of God. Every year on the first Sunday after the first full moon, after the spring equinox, the celebration was made. So the sign of the cross is the sign of Tammuz T. It was S Star Sunday. All right, can you say it to me now? Ready? Here we go. East Sunday. Or properly, S Star Sunday. Get it right. We're celebrating with rabbits and eggs. What's going to happen Sunday on Easter? What's going to happen in churches? Many churches are going to have an egg hunt. Little sperms going out looking for eggs. You know it's true. Esther also proclaimed that because Tammuz was killed by a pig, that the pig that a pig must be eaten on Sunday. Remind me not to have pork on Sunday. By now, the readers of this track, and this was a track written, should have made connection that the, the paganism has infiltrated the contemporary Christian church. This is a track you can get. I, I could not get the address. I wish I could have. And further study indicates that the paganism came in by way of Roman Catholic system. No hope in the Pope. Old Peter Rabbit ain't going to do nothing for you. The truth is that Easter has nothing whatsoever to do with the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We also know that Easter can be as much as three weeks away from Passover. Oh. From the calendar being changed? According to the, to the Catholics in their calendar, Jesus didn't even die when he was died because they moved it up four years. Because the pagan holiday is always set on the first Sunday after the first full moon of the e e spring equinox. Why is Easter always changed every year? Because Esther and her full moon and her period. Pilot. That's what it is. Didn't we read that 28 cycle? No, on, men. Don't our wives get crazy every 28 days? Well, Easter day. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm a widower. Some have wondered why the word Easter is in the King James Bible. Oh, here we go. It's because, it's because Acts chapter 12, and we already talked about this the first the first lesson, tells us that it was the evil King Herod who was planning to celebrate Easter and not Christians. All right, go for it. This is a trap. I gotta try to find this track. The true Passover and pagan Easter sometimes coincide, but in some years they great distance apart. So much more could be said. We have much more information for you. If you're a seeker of the truth, 
Like I said, get the books. If you can get this track, give me the address. I can order some. But we know the Bible says that God's a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. The truth is that 40 days of Lent, eggs, rabbits, hot cross buns, and the Easter ham have any, has nothing to do with Christianity but the ancient pagan religion of the mystery Babylon. Here we go. This is someone else saying this. Not me. They know better. These are all anti-Christ activities. Satan is the master deceiver and has filled the lives of well-meaning professional Christians with idolatry. Good for you. These things bring the wrath of God upon children of disobedience who try to make pagan customs of Baal and to be worshipped by Christians. You must answer for your activities and for what you teach your children. Amen. You teach your children this nonsense. And Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me. He didn't say suffer the little children to come to Baal. He didn't say suffer the little children to come to Esther. He said suffer the little children to come unto me. And when you get your children in this crap, you are not bringing them to Jesus Christ. You are bringing them to the Antichrist. And Stolly W. Hayward, D.D., said that. May that be written down in the oracles in heaven on the day of the judgment seat of Christ. And I don't think it will burn. These customs of Easter honor Baal, who is Satan, and is worshipped as the rising sun. And his house is the house of the rising sun. Japan calls himself the rising sun, the nation. They don't worship God either. How many churches will have sunrise services? I read that Ezekiel 8.16 already. On Eshtar's day. And face the rising sun of Baal in the east. How many will use colored eggs and rabbit stories as they did in ancient Babylon? Well, it actually turns out that Easter is a pagan festival celebrating spring in the northern hemisphere. We said Britain. Long before the advent of Christianity, we find Easter before Christ. Since prehistoric times, people have celebrated equinoxes and solstices as sacred time. University of Sydney professor Carol Kushak. This is a professor. I'm not a professor. Well, I'm a doctor. Doctor of Divinity. This is somebody who knows what they're doing. They specifically in the study of what we're reading. The spring equinox is a day where the amount of dark and the amount of daylight is exactly identical. So you can tell that when you're emerging from winter because the daylight and the dark have come back into balance. People have mapped their whole life according to these patterns of nature. And God says that in, in Genesis chapter one, the sun, the moon, and stars are set the seasons, the times, the summer. In 325 AD, the first major church council, Council of Nicaea, Catholic, <clears throat> determined that Easter should fall on the Sunday following the first moon, first full moon after the spring equinox. Was that not the time of. Didn't we read that back here? Didn't we read that about Tammuz and Semiramis? Now is not the Roman Catholic Church following Semiramis and Tammuz, Roman Catholic holiday, uh, Easter, and then Christmas? It's not the celebration of Jesus Christ. It's the celebration of Tammuz. Babylon. We're almost done. This is why the date moves and why Easter festivals are often referred to as movable feasts. This is your answer. Tammuz and Semiramis. There's a definite period between March 25th and April 25th on which Easter, shall, Easter Sunday must fall. It is determined by the movement of the planets in the sun, Professor Crusack said. Not styly, a professor. In most countries in Europe, the name of Easter is derived from the Jewish festival of Passover. So in Greek, the feast is called Pash. 
We talked about that. Italy, Pesca, Danish, Pe well, no, this different. Professor Cusack said. So there's a different meaning. It's a language, tongues. But the English speaking countries and in Germany, Esther, Easter takes its name from a pagan goddess from the Anglo Saxon England who is described in a book by the 18th century English monk Bibi, Bidi, Bidi. There we go. Yeshurath, E O S T R E, was a goddess of spring or renewal. That why her feast is attached to the vernal equinox. Professor Cruzak said. Your church may not say it. But professors of history with titles given to them for their authority. As Easter has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. In Germany, the feast, the festival is called Oster, and the goddess is called Ostra. Easter has many names, and all the names associate not with Jesus Christ, but with goddesses. Are you about ready to give this crap up? I know you're mad because I say the word crap. Keep saying the word crap. Doo doo. Are you ready to give this doo doo up? Too bad we can't find no toilet paper. Oh, shit. I didn't believe I said that. All right. <laughs> I surprised myself. I surprised my wife all the time. They never knew what I was going to say. Many of the pagan customs associated with the celebration of the spring evidently became absorbed into Christianity as symbols of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's Professor Cruzak. She said it has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It was absorbed into it. And she won't say, but we'll say, to the Catholic Church. Eggs are a symbol of new life. Became a common people's explanation of resurrection. After the chill of the winter months, nature was coming to life again. Professor Kruschak, during the Middle Ages, I, I'm giving you all the, the people. Don't tell me I'm a liar. 10 to 20 people I've quoted in this report. During the Middle Ages, people began decorating eggs and eating them as a treat following the Mass on Easter Sunday after fasting through Lent. I guess they did eat the egg. Professor Kuzak has said, in a, in a way, with the word Mass, it's Catholic. Mass is what you have to do to get to a Catholic heaven. If you're not a Catholic, you can't do the Mass. You can't do the sacraments. One of the sacraments, which is which is traditional baloney, pig, <laughs> it's garbage or doo doo. I won't say crap. Where was it? Mass on Sunday of Lent. So after the 40 days of Lent, we have a colored egg. I love Cadbury eggs. This is actually something. Now, this is quote, quote. This is actually something that still happens, especially in Eastern Europe countries like Poland, Professor Kusak said. I'm a Polish. My mom's side Polish is 100% through my grandpa. They were Polish Catholics. Quote, the custom of decorated hard-boiled eggs or blown eggs still a very popular folk custom. End of quote. End of quote. Eggs have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has to do with the Catholics. And even before that, they were doing it in Egypt. Remember? They're doing it in Babylonia. Ba Babbits. Rabbits and hares, they're unclean animals in the Bible too, you know, for the Levitical law, are also associated with fertility and were symbols linked to the goddess Esther. E-O-S-T-R-E. -E. We read that up here with the monk, B.D. And he told us E-O-S-T-R-E was associated with Easter. So here the rabbits are a symbol of Easter. Easter is. Also he was a favorite animal of Tammuz, Babylonia. The first associating of the rabbit with Easter 
according to Professor Cusack, was the mention of an Easter hare in a book by German professor of medicine, George Frank, F-R-A-C-K, von Frankenau, F-R-A-N-C-K-E-N-A-U, I'm giving you the spelling, look it up, published in 1722, quote, he recalls a folklore that hares would hide the colored eggs that children hunted for, which suggests to us that as early as the 18th century, even back for Babylonia, decorated eggs with hidden were hidden in garden for egg hunts. Professor Kruzak said, quote in George Frankenau. And I've told you, when you send your children looking for eggs, you are calling them sperm. Because sperm looks for an egg. And there's only one sperm that finds an egg and fertilizes it. And there's only one child that will find that one egg. Don't be gross, Tyler. I'm not being gross. It's a biological fact that sperm finds an egg. So when you're out in the court, well, it won't be 2020, 2019, maybe 2021, Lord, when you find children out in a, in a, in a cemetery, out in a church, yeah, cemetery, and they're out there on an Easter egg hunt, you got sperm looking for eggs. And some of them are female. Because they don't know what sex they are. Remember that God that was a male and also became a female? Beelzebub? Lucifer? It is Lucifer is teaching children today. Oh, we don't know what sex we are. Where did that come from? It comes from Beelzebub. It comes from Lucifer. Commercialization during the 19th century saw rabbits become popular symbol of Easter with the growth of breeding card in into industry. Postage services became affordable and people wanted to keep in touch with people, Professor Kruzak said. Card companies like Hallmark, Hallmark became a big by launching images of cute little rabbits and Easter eggs on cards. The first edible Easter bunny made from sugar pastry. You didn't know where Easter bunny came from? were made in Germany. Oh, now we got Germany entering into. Germany. The, the Roman Catholic Adolf Hitler that fought against Jews in complication camps with the Nazi party. I got German in me. My father's side. You know where Germany is today? It's, it's a third-rate country. I know missionaries are going over there and you really don't get much work done. Big confessionary companies like Cadbury in England. Remember we talked about England and Britain before? Started manufacturing colored eggs. Chocolate eggs, excuse me, chocolate eggs. Chocolate that used to be something that bitter and drunk became something that was sweetened and turned into confessionary treat, said Professor Kruzak. They used to drink hot chocolate. They didn't know before that you could make it into candies. Easter is a pagan festival. If Easter isn't really about Jesus, what's it about? Today we see secular cultures celebrating its spring equinox, while religious cultures celebrate the resurrection. They're nowhere apart. However, early Christianity made a pragmatic acceptance of ancient pagan practices most of which we enjoy today in Easter. Professor Krosak has admitted to us, though preachers and teachers will not. Easter is never, it has never been part of Jesus Christ, and it was brought into the church as paganism. So when I say Easter's paganism, and the Christians, no, it's not, you're wrong, and I have a professor who backs me up, and from what I've read, it doesn't sound like she, I hope she gets saved. You know, it's great when a non-believer backs up what a believer is saying. The general sy symbolic story of the death of the son, now she puts S-O-N, then parenthesis S-U-N, 
on a cross, parenthesis, the consolation of the Southern Cross, and the parenthesis. And his rebirth and overcoming the powers of darkness, as well as the worn story of the ancient world, Babylon. See, she don't she doesn't step her foot out. She doesn't want to, but she sure puts her mouth out there. There were plenty of parallel revival resurrection saviors too. Came but there's only one Jesus Christ. The devil imitated. That's what we call an antichrist. You know, oh, the antichrist is coming. The antichrist is coming. After the church is raptured, the antichrist is... Yeah, but the antichrist has been around for a while. Let me, let me show you. Extra thing. Let me get my Bible. Let me see if I can find it. We're almost done. Let me get my Bible. I had all these typed out, so that's why I didn't have my Bible. But let me show you something. Oh, John. I'll show you. I'm giving you the truth. Uh, second John. One of John. Uh, yeah, I gotta look it up. Hold on. I apologize. I didn't, look through, I didn't think I was gonna get this. All right, all right. Here is First John two eighteen. I thought Second John. Listen to this. The Apostle John writing before he dies. I mean, what I mean before he died, he hasn't died yet. First John 2, 18. Little children, it is the last time. That's what we are now. <laughs> last days. And as you have heard that any that Antichrist shall come. Yep, we've heard it, right? The Antichrist. 666, six, six, the Antichrist. Even now, there are many Antichrists. Whereby we know that it is the last time. And I'm telling you right now. And I'm going to step off the wall here for a moment. I'm going to speak of my own. You don't have to believe this. I believe the Easter and the Christmas and all that. I believe it's Antichrist. Tamus. And the other nonsense. Eshtar. I believe it's all Antichrist. Go back to the end of my quote. The Sumerian goddess Inanna, which we read, or Ishtar, was hung naked on a stake and was subsequently resurrected and ascended up from the underworld. One of the oldest resurrection myths, Egyptian Horus, born on 25th of December, Horus, Sorry about that. Got disconnect. Born on the 25th of December, Horus and his damaged eye became symbol of life and rebirth. December 25th is not the only birthday. It's not the birthday of Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I think Jesus was born on the Feast of Tabernacles. That's a whole other story. But Horus, the Egyptian god, Tammuz, were born on December 25th. And his damaged eye, Mithras, M-I-T-H-R-A-S, was born on what we now call Christmas Day. And his followers celebrated the spring equinox, Easter. Even as late as the 4th century A.D. The soul, S-O-L, Invictus, I-N-V-I-C-T-U-S, associated with Mithras, M-I-T-H-R-A-S, was the last great pagan cult the church had to overcome. Diocese was a divine child resurrected by his grandmother. Diocese was also brought. Diocese also brought his mom, Semele, S E M E L E, back to life. There are plenty of gods in any Christ born on December twenty fifth that claim to be resurrected on Easter. And it's sorry that the true Christian church also celebrates that mess. Or the Catholic church would say mass. All the fun things about Easter are pagan. Bunnies are left over from pagan festival or Esther. It's called Easter. 
The great northern gardeners with the symbol was a rabbit or hare. Exchange of eggs and ancient custom celebrate, celebrated by many cultures. Hot cross buns are very ancient too. In the Old Testament, we see the Israelites baking sweet buns for an idol, and I read that to you. And religious leaders trying to put a stop to it. Ezekiel, God. The early church clergy also had to put a stop to sacred cakes being baked to Easter. Not today. How many Baptist churches, I'm, I'm speaking to, to the Baptists, they're supposed to be the ones close to God. How many of them are going to be having hot cross buns? Well, not 2020. 2019. And maybe, Lord willing, 2021. You are free to get, we're, we're almost done. One more paragraph. You are free to give this video to anybody, everybody, share it, say, listen, you know what? You got to listen to this information. This guy's bong crazy. You won't believe how bad he marks our, our Easter. He should be locked up and put in jail. Or you know what? I heard this report by this guy about Easter. I got down on my knees. I got down on my knees with my family. I got down on my... Uh, uh, we repented to Jesus Christ and got saved. And we feel all so clean now. It's up to you. You can keep it. Or you can repent of it. What a better way to celebrate. Than to bite the head of a bunny goddess. And go to sunrise serve. I didn't write that. That was that's Professor Kusak. Now let me add one more thing about sunrise service again. Ezekiel 8. I'm gonna close with the Bible verse. Ezekiel 8, 16 and 17. And he put and he brought me to the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, the door of the temple of the Lord. The temple of God. Between the porch and the altar. That'd be the brazen altar. For the offering. Were about five and twenty men. Twenty-five men. With their backs towards the temple of the Lord. They got their backs turned on God. They're not looking at God. With their faces toward the east. Sunrise. And they worship the sun toward the east. Sunrise service. I doubt one's going to happen this year. But we have Daytona Beach, Florida. They have churches line the beaches of Daytona Beach and Ormond Beach and New Smyrna all the way down facing Baal. And they're not afraid to call it the sunrise service. Facing toward the sun, toward the east. Then said he unto me, as thou seen this, old man, oh son of man, Ezekiel, is it a light thing to the house of Judah or America or England or that they commit these abominations? Ezekiel 8, 17. We're going to sunrise service, family. Everybody get your new dresses on. Abomination! I didn't say that. God, the Holy Spirit said that, friend. You better believe I get upset. You better believe I'm shouting it out. Upon the housetops. Easter is a bomb in nation. You have a free will to say I will or will not no longer. For they have filled the land with violence. What is the world today? Violence. Disease. Pestilence. And the fear that the Antichrist is going to give us the mark, mark, mark. I mean, six, six, six. Which, if I take that injection, they say, hey, listen, this injection will help you from getting coronavirus. And it, ha it has something in it so we can find you. Here's my arm. Do it. Stylo, you're taking the six, six, six. The six, six has nothing to do with me. The mark of the beast has to do after I'm gone. I take that thing and they put that chip in me. When I'm raptured, my guts and my blood is going to spill out on the ground with that chip. You haven't studied your Bible. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. 
Now we've gone into great detail. I have quoted people who know what they're doing, who have made great study. These people are known in the church. They have been known through history through the years. I believe 100% of everything I said today is true. There's books. And there are people out there who will, who will refute what I said to. But in the realm of the gods and goddesses that surround the feast of Easter, and any pagan will tell you, true pagan, that it is their holiday. I, I had a guy, he just died this year, and I didn't know. He's unsaved. And he would listen to me. And I would listen to him. And he was into that, that, that stuff, paganism. Bad. And he'd come up to me when we were working. And Easter would come up to me. He said, you know, you know, Easter is our holiday, not yours. I said, yeah, it's true. <laughs> and he didn't expect that answer. And everything to a point that what I read to you, that can be found in the books I gave you, and the people who wrote, and I give you, if you want a copy, I'll get you a copy. I'll have it, you pay for it, I'll send it to your house. It's pagan. I don't care what your mother says, I don't care what your pastor says, I don't care what your father says, I don't care what your children say. The fact is that it has a parallel line, Professor Krusek said, a parallel line with the occult, with the paganism, it ought not to be in my life. Now, when it comes to this time of Easter, I love the jelly beans. And we get little, little chocolates. And if we're able to get to the store the day after Easter and get the candy marked down 50%, hey, no problem. But incorporating the service, which is no service to Jesus Christ. Well, we're going to talk about the resurrection of Jesus. Pick another time. Don't pick the pagan time. Find, uh, you know, find, you know, you're going to celebrate the birth of Jesus. Like I said, it's a whole other thing. When's the Feast of Tabernacle? I believe that's when he's born. That's the only feast that went eight days. On the eighth day, Jesus Christ was circumcised. But well, we want to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? When's the Passover? Now, it may not fall on a Sunday, but find the Passover and take three days and three nights after Passover. Uh, well, if, let's just say if it falls on a Friday. Okay, the Sunday after that have the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, that one falls, uh, it just happens to fall on Easter. All right, do the week after, the week before. Easter in disguise. It's like Halloween. A, a little boy comes up to your, to your house, he's dressed like a witch. He's not a witch, he's a little boy. Easter comes to the church, oh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. No, it's not the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's actually the resurrection of Tammuz. And then his star, East star, at star day, and all the other names of Mary I gave you. I'm trying to help you out. And I've known I made some people angry. I've known some people are ready to kill me. And I, I believe it. I know some people turn off these videos and they won't watch it all. And I know there's some people out there, I think just one person say, Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for somebody to tell me the truth. And you can get this information on the internet. You can find out the falseness. Is You can look up Google, is Easter pay? And you're going to find people that refute it too, I told you. But with the names of paganism, the names of religion, the names of goddesses, and God, and Rome, and Babylon, and Egypt, when God said, get out of there. And you know what's happened in 2020, or 2019, 2020? Egypt and Babylon has come back into the church. And one of the seven churches, I, I forget which one, it, it was written by John, by the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, come on out. Come on out. 
You know, my family, people, I tell them, I say, I don't worship, I don't worship Christmas. They give me that look, oh my. They do the same thing when I tell them I don't have anything to do with Easter. It's not Bible. I hope this helps you. I hope you, if you know somebody who wants to need or needs to know the truth, I hope you get these videos are uncopyrighted. They're, they're, they're free to get out. Share them. If you put them on cassette or whatever, you, if you can do it. But if you take these videos and you splice them and you make them to say what you want to say, that's between you and God. I know what I've said. And I have been cut and spliced in some things. So, it's been a long time. Uh, one, two, three hours. I hope these three hours will change you to get... I hope it will have you to repent. If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I hope Easter has been cleansed. And don't expect fellow church members to be all happy what you did. Don't you expect some of the pastors to be all thrilled. Paul said, marvel not. I'm no, that's not. Uh, Paul said, have I become your enemy? Because I told you the truth. I've got many enemies, Christians, and churches, because I speak the truth. I'm going to speak the truth because I'm going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ. I want to hear, well done. And I believe I did a study about Easter. If you, if you, my belief, it's up to you, free will. I believe if you participate in Easter, you're not going to hear, well done. May God bless you. Thank you.